Ever since Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, there's been a cornucopia of films similar with kids' themes in mind that have been greenlit because they've all come under that banner of now they've been out for so many years that you can make them into movies or change them. And so we're now in the place where we're getting a number of those. One of those such films is Mary Had a Little Lamb. So let's talk about it. From the same writer as Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey, comes a film about Mary. Mary is a, a, an old lady in this film who lives in a quaint little cottage in the middle of the woods in nowhere. And she has a little lamb. If you've seen the trailer at all, you'll understand what this lamb is. It's in the vein of that Winnie and the Pooh, Blood and Honey sort of filmmaking style. Not the same director, same writer. Here we have a podcaster who's been given one week to kind of sort out her murder crime mystery podcast to make it come alive again. It's been down on the numbers and off she goes with her team. She finds these two people that have gone missing in this woods and she's going to investigate and she's going to do whatever she needs to to sort of create a story, even if it's not there, to kind of revitalize her podcast because she cares mostly only about uh, herself and, and the fact that she may lose her job. Not really worried about the people that she's with and, or the fact that she might be putting the people she's with uh, in danger. And then we have the quirky bunch of team, the a very interesting group of people. I'm trying to give you an idea of the storyline that they were going for. But the problem is it takes way too long to get into the place that you want to watch a film like this. Mary Had a Little Lamb to the killings. And uh, the reason why there's killings you don't really care you're just kind of guessing who's going to die first let me talk about the positives the positives here is that there's a few really nice creative shots that i thought were interesting i say a few there's a few with lighting the moonlight kind of shining through or the daylight shining through that's the positives let's get into the negatives 100 percent, this film feels like a student film like they're in their second year of uni they're lecturer has said okay i need you to come up with an idea and what you end up with is a lead that sounds very similar to Lindsay Lohan and also looks like Lindsay Lohan, but she's like smokes 20 cigars a day and that's fine. But she is the leader of this sort of podcast and her acting is one that's very regimented. In fact, all the characters are very one dimensional. They're either the guy that's very horny or the girl that's not trusting or the one that's uh, not sure about things that is as far as we go into any sort of background really of our characters so we don't really care about what happens to them the story is about the podcast once we jump into the podcast and we go and start investigating about what's happened and who is this lady with her son that seems to be a bit creepy that is probably the best part in fact the lady who plays mary i thought she was fairly good at being creepy as mary but then you get to some of the film making techniques and it's not something that you would normally notice even a, in a B horror movie film. Uh, it's not something that you would notice on purpose like, oh, that that shot's terrible. But when you notice like three quarters of the screen is, is missing, there's lots of space in the air. It feels like a student film, like someone's first time making of a film. There's lots of shots like that that are just odd. There's conversations with very stunted dialogue. I don't even know if it's the actors that are as bad as they look like they may be or whether it's the dialogue because if you listen to the dialogue a lot of the time it doesn't even make sense. Characters reactions to to uh, bits of dialogue or moments that would say something that they just come out and spew a, a line of dialogue that also doesn't make any sense. Most of this film to me in places doesn't make sense. And then when it comes to the killings, there'll be often places where I guess they didn't have the budget to show certain things. So they would cut from the moment where that person was going to be stabbed in the neck and stabbed loads of times. And it would either super fast cut to a place where the stuff is happening or the moment after it really takes you out of it. There's a couple of killings that I would thought were sort of interesting. But when you're embracing a B horror movie, the one thing you have to get right is make the movie not boring and full of kills like they had less than a hundred grand budget but so did the evil dead you know way back in the day and the thing that they embraced was the gore the the, the body sort of horror and having fun with it they take this film or the story the filmmakers take it way too seriously for it to be 
that sort of film. It's not a serious horror. You needed to really embrace the comedy and stupidness of having a character that has a sheep for a head. And if you've seen the trailer, that's not really a spoiler. You know it's going to be some sort of weird Winnie the Pooh-esque transition similar to what we have in this film. And when it comes to the monster creation, it literally just looks like a guy who's wearing a sheep mask. So there's no animatronics, there's no movement in the eyeballs. Even if they dislocated the jaw and some done a, a little bit of puppeteering in different shots, so you could have had someone control it, made the monster itself look a little bit more scary than what they did. I think uh, it would have been loads better. But the worst thing of all in this movie is the score and the buzz track. There are often times that there is no buzz track, meaning that when someone is running across the grass where there should be that sound effect, there isn't. Where there should be someone making different noises, there isn't. So they mask it a little bit with score. And the score itself is very generic. Sometimes when we get those vicious killings, there is this really kind of mellow soundtrack that doesn't heighten it in any way. It's not like a juxtaposition that actually works. It just doesn't work. So what you end up having is really soft killings. Oftentimes when people are like being killed off, the volume is dipped for some reason. There's just like, it's really soft. That is the place as a filmmaker, you normally accentuate the noise. And like the, like if you're gonna put the, the classic jump scares in or something like, something like that, you would raise the volume for that but you would have a heightened kind of sound effects. None of that is in place. And even around, you're missing loads of buzz tracks. So what you end up having is a really odd feeling for a horror film that makes no sense most of the time. It's quite frustrating because you feel like there is a terrible fun film in here. But what you end up with is just a terrible film. There's nothing redeeming about this film. I will never go back and watch this movie. I can't see it becoming a cult classic. I can just see people really being annoyed with it because had there been another edit where they changed the soundtrack, where they had a better score, another couple of edits through this film would have helped massively. And it's something that you definitely could have fixed. So I don't know if it was timing that they had to get it out. They had to show the investors that they had an end product. That's often what the case is with these type of films when they're trying to scrape together just under a hundred grand budget. That is the case. Now, it did go to local cinemas and it made five million. So it definitely got made its money back. But it's coming to uh, digital, I think, VOD on October 6. And I just, I don't know what people are going to think about this. If you loved it, let me know what you loved about this movie. Or if you hated it more than I did, let me know which bits you thought were absolutely ridiculous. Love to chat to you guys about that in the comments below. I know some people love the terrible, terrible films. I do as well, but I like them because it's terrible bad, not terrible, terrible. <laughs> Like it's terrible, so bad that it's good sort of thing. This isn't that. So I'm going to give this half a Nicolas Cage out of five. <laughs> and you've got one. Congratulations. And that's mostly because they you had the creepy lady that was fairly good. And we had a couple of creative cinematography shots that I appreciated. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts. But most of all, until next time, remember, live long on Tuesday.